Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Incredibly Barbaric Trials by Ordeal In today's society, those who are deemed guilty of a crime will face a trial to establish if they are in fact guilty or wrongly accused. Today you will see individuals in a courtroom and evidence will be given and a verdict will be decided upon based on that evidence. There have been many stories in past history of women being accused of witchcraft and as such being treated as the apparent law saw fit. There are examples of witches being burnt at the stake and even a woman being tied up and weighed down with a stone before being thrown into a river to drown. It was believed that if the woman sunk, she was innocent, but if she floated, then she was in fact a witch. Trial by ordeal was thought to have been a less brutal and barbaric practice, but it was in fact, in some of its forms, just that brutal and very barbaric. In early medieval England, if the guilt of an individual could not be decided, then a trial by ordeal was held to allow God to determine whether or not the accused was actually guilty. The whole concept was to assign the accused an unpleasant and dangerous task, and God would judge based upon the outcome. The survival of the accused would often lead to the belief of innocence, and the process dates back to the Old Testament. However, it was used mostly during the Middle Ages and early medieval England. The first noted trial by ordeal actually dates back to the year 510 AD and was used in the form of a cauldron filled with boiling water. Trial by cauldron was an ancient French custom used against those who were accused of theft, false witness or contempt at court. The accused was made to put his right hand in a boiling cauldron and pull out a ring. As the French influence grew across Europe, this spread in practice. The earliest mention in England was around the year 690 AD. It was referenced in Anglo-Saxon law and it was the only mention until the 10th century. One of the laws of Ethelred the Unready stated that untrustworthy men were to be sent to the triple ordeal, an ordeal using very hot, heavy iron that would be used to burn. There are historically four main trials by ordeal used by the Anglo-Saxons. The first was trial by hot water, the second trial by hot iron, the third trial by cold water, and the fourth was trial by consecrated or blessed bread. Now these were not the only trials used, but in history are the most commonly recorded for that era. The trial by hot iron was usually used for women accused of a crime. Cold water was often used for individuals of low status and consecrated bread was used for individuals such as priests. When the Normans came around, they then introduced a trial called trial by combat. And this is where the accused would fight with the accuser until one was incapacitated, i.e. killed or unable to go on. The loser was then hanged as it was believed that God had judged them to be guilty. However, if the accused had not been accused by an individual, but instead an organisation or government, then a champion would be nominated. Each trial by combat allowed a variety of weapons, and the area in which they were to fight was usually around 60 square feet, and many were allowed a leather shield and a small amount of leather armour. The fight was to begin before noon and finish before sundown, and either person was able to end the fight by shouting craven, a word taken from Old French for broken. The fighting would not end until either one was dead or disabled, and the last man standing then won the case. The trial by hot water was used in a way that had the accused plunged their hand into boiling water, and they would then have it bandaged for three days. If after the three days the burns began to heal, then this was seen as a sign by God that the person was in fact innocent. Trial by hot iron was similar in the sense that a person's hands were bandaged for three days to see if they had healed, but the accused would have had to have had their hands burnt by iron. One of the most common ordeal was that of fire, and it was actually rather similar to the ordeal by hot iron. It was considered torture, revolving around the accused being burnt with an object. 
such as having to hold a piece of iron in their hands, and then having to walk a set number of paces. The severity of the crime would determine the weight of the iron, and innocence would be determined by the lack of injury. It was believed that God would have intervened to heal the wound, thus proving innocence. If wounds were prominent, which they undoubtedly always would have been, then the accused would have been exiled or sentenced to death. Another ordeal using fire was to have the accused walk over red-hot ploughshares. Interestingly, the mother of King Edward the Confessor proved her innocence when accused of adultery, as she walked over these and was unharmed. The trial by cold water was slightly different, as this was where the accused had their arms tied before being thrown into a pond or a lake. It was believed that if a person floated, then they had been rejected by God. Those who sunk were innocent and required lifting out of the water. There are records of a man being placed into a barrel and sunk three times before his innocence was established, and this was the punishment for poaching. It is trial by water that is mostly associated later, such as in the 16th century when women were sank to establish innocence. Some at the time argued that a witch would float as they had renounced baptism when entering service for the devil. The final trial by ordeal was the trial by consecrated or blessed bread. This was typically used to assess if a priest was lying. A prayer would be made when the individual would ask to be choked if he lied, and if he choked then he was guilty. This ordeal is also known as trial by host. Interestingly, there are only three traditional important rules that accompanied these trials by ordeal. The first was that a priest must be present. This is because the trials were designed by God to decide the guilt of the accused. The second is that the accused would spend three days prior to the trial at a holy site or a church or a monastery. This time would be used to pray and fast before their trial. And the third was that the accused would attend mass before their trial commenced. Now, although not commonly spoken of, there was another ordeal used, and this was trial by poison. Even today, some cultures administer a poisonous bean to establish guilt. If a person vomited the bean, then they were innocent, but if they either became unwell or died, then they were in fact guilty. During the medieval period, the cross was used as an instrument to determine guilt. The accuser had to undergo the ordeal along with the accused, and they would stand either side of a cross with their hands stretched out horizontally. The first one who lowered their arms lost, and this was brought in to discourage violence or duels to resolve disagreements. Now through history, the trials are certainly a very interesting concept and have had a very close link with the church and the forgiveness of God. Punishments increased in severity and were very often highly violent and barbaric. One man who was found guilty of theft had his eyes gouged out and his genitalia mutilated. The ordeals were seen as public entertainment in a way, and it wasn't until the reign of King Henry III in 1216 that these were replaced with a jewellery trial. However, one trial by ordeal wasn't banned until the 19th century, and this was trial by combat. And even in 2002, a Welshman refused to pay a fine for the registry of a vehicle, and instead demanded that he face a trial by combat, and unsurprisingly, this was rejected and he was instead made to pay the fine. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.